The Office of Civil Defense has issued the following message. This station has interrupted its regular program to participate in the emergency broadcast system. We're sorry. All circuits are busy now. Will you please try your call again later? Hello YouTube and Preppers, this is the comms Prepper with a video about multimeters. I was making a cable this weekend to interface my HF radio email modem to my bug out bag and I had to check the pins because I had to make a custom connector to make this work. So it gave me an idea for a video. So we're going to do a basic video on multimeters. Uh, this is a $15 meter, very cheap. You can get similar meters at Walmart, Track Auto, Sears. They're out there and they're not very expensive. Uh, they're not precision meters, but they will do the things you need to do to maintain your communications equipment during an emergency. And there's three basic abilities a prepper should have with a multimeter to maintain their emergency communications equipment. The first one would be how to check for AC voltage. And that would be the voltage here uh, coming out of your wall. And that would be volts AC or volts alternating current. And typically that's indicated on the meter over here with a little sine wave. The second thing you should be able to do is check for DC voltages or volts DC or volts direct current and that's typically represented by a line then with three dashes underneath it and if you look at the meter it's kind of blurry. I'll throw some screenshots in. You can see that there. And the final one would be is to tell a short, to check a fuse. And sometimes that's called the ohm scale, or you'll see an emblem for a diode, a schematic diagram symbol for a diode, or a little wavy speaker sounds uh, to represent sound that would come out of the meter. And on this particular meter here, they have the diode image and the little sound waves coming out. So the first thing we're going to do here is check for AC voltage, what's in the extension cord. Now any anytime you're checking for voltages, safety first, so if you wear jewelry, take all your jewelry off, your spouse will understand. You don't want to get uh, hit high voltage with that and have it stick to a piece of equipment and you yank your hand away. So take your jewelry off and we're going to go ahead and we're going to check for volts AC. So we're going to set the meter here down to the AC scale and we're going to let go up to max 200 volts because we know this is going to be 110 volts. And now that we have no jewelry on, we'll go ahead and stick our leads in that plug. And there we go. We have 113 volts coming out of that plug. So we know we have power and that's a good troubleshooting technique. In fact, when you go to technical schools, the first thing they'll tell you when you're troubleshooting is always check your voltages. So that's checking for AC voltages. So now let's check DC voltages. We'll go ahead and remove our leads. We're going to set this up to the DC scale. And we're going to use this battery here, this 12 volt battery, to check its voltage. So I'll go up here and I'll put the leads on there and hold them down. And now you can see in the display that this battery is putting out 12.22 volts. So that tells me that battery has a charge. Now maybe you have an ocean radio or a handheld radio and it's not working. Well, you can actually take those batteries off those radios. This happens to be uh, my ocean battery, which was dead, but I put a little bit of a charge on it for the video. And that has 6.5 volts when it should actually be 7.4. So it still needs more of a charge. But that gives me an opportunity to check to make sure that battery is still good. So let's say my handheld radio isn't working and I'm not quite sure why. Well, troubleshooting step one, check the voltages. You can come along and check the, the voltages on the battery. Another skill you'll need as a prepper for emergency communications is checking to make sure your fuses are good. And that's probably going to be the most common troubleshooting problem you'll have in the field is blown fuses. So I have some fuses here as examples. We'll actually show you how this works. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pause and set the camera to macro mode and then show you how this works. 
Okay, I've got the camera in macro mode, so we'll see if we can keep this clear. I'm going to set the meter down here to the diode position with the sound. And we're going to test that by putting the leads together. And you can hear that audio that says that there's a connection between those two probes. So when checking a fuse, we're going to come down over here and actually look at the fuse now. When I touch the leads to the fuse, if the fuse is good, there'll be a connection between the fuse and I'll hear that sound. And that tells me that fuse is good. Uh, these blade fuses that you see in cars, again, across the fuse, I touch that and that tells me that fuse is good. Now what I'll do is I'm going to pause again and we're going to blow these fuses so you can actually see them pop. We're going to use that 12 volt battery up there and put too much current through it and blow it and then check it with the meter and give you an idea of the indications you're going to see when you have a bad fuse. Okay, so we have this fuse in macro mode and I'm going to throw 12 volts against this fuse and make it blow. And there you saw that spark, the heat generated and blew that fuse, which makes that fuse now a bad fuse. So I'll pause again and now we'll make the blade fuse blow. Okay, now we have the blade fuse up there and we're going to go ahead that short and blow that fuse. And you should have saw a flash and that blew that fuse. So now I'll pause here and we'll set the meter up and we'll go ahead and check it and you'll see what a bad fuse looks like when checking it with the meter. Okay, so we have the meter set back up and we'll go ahead and touch the leads to verify it's working, which means we have connectivity between those two probes. But now when I touch the side of the fuse, I don't get a beep. And that's because that metal filament in there was burnt open, blowing that fuse. So this is what a bad fuse looks like when you're checking it with the meter. You get nothing. If you touch the two leads, you get audio. But when you go across the fuse, you get nothing. Again, same thing here with the blade fuse. If I touch the two leads, I get audio. But the filament inside the fuse blew, so when I go across the blade, I get nothing. So that's what a blown fuse, that's the indication for a blown fuse. And this is an important skill to have as a prepper. Uh, you should also have extra fuses for all your equipment. But at least have a method and a basic multimeter so you can do some basic troubleshooting. Again, what you're interested in doing is you want to be able to check for AC voltage coming out of the wall of your generator. The ability to check your batteries, uh, regardless of what type of battery it has. And to check for shorts and opens and check for fuses. Uh, you might have a mag light flashlight that's not working and you're not sure if it's the battery or it's the bulb. Well, you can take the meter and put it there in a DC mode and get your Duracell battery out. You go ahead and touch those leads across. Let you, let you see that in the display. And that's 1.5 volts. So you know that battery is good. So having the basic ability to do some basic troubleshooting with a multimeter is an absolute must for any emergency communications plan. And as always, thank you for watching my videos and subscribing to my channel. This has been the Comms Prepper with Multimeter Basics.